today with us we have Mr. Abel, and he's a filmmaker, and we'd like to ask you some questions. Okay, what made you want to do a movie about dyslexia? Uh, the reason I did a movie about dyslexia, um, well, I was born dyslexic, and I'm planning on retiring dyslexic, <laughs> and, um, and I realized a lot of people didn't know much about dyslexia, and dyslexia, it doesn't discriminate, it doesn't care how old you are, how young you are, if you're a male or a female, or what religion, or what race, and, and we have all these people who are wired just a little bit different. And you can't tell a dyslexic walking down the street. Yet one in five people, one in seven people, when you take a look at any of these numbers, are dyslexic. So I thought, I started doing documentaries. I've, did, I've done commercials, I've done features, I've done TV. Um, I get paid a lot of good money to do commercials, and that's film lies. But for documentaries, that's film truth. And so I wanted to get to what is the truth about dyslexia, because I figured... I figured I could make a film um, so people could understand a complex subject. I made it, I wanted to make a, a film that parents and kids and teachers could understand. I wanted to make it so simple that even policymakers and congressmen could understand <laughs> it. So that's why I made the film about dyslexia. What made you interested, I guess? In, in, like, in yeah. dyslexia? Well, so, uh, you know, when you begin to start realizing how many people, and see, but creativity is a very important thing. It's, 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 and you use it in life. So, um, uh, I got involved in TV and films, and it's a good thing to, you know, to good. Uh, so I think it's, you know, as I, as I, there's some things I'm, I'm not good at. Like, you don't want me to do your taxes, <laughs> right? So I decided not to become an accountant, right? So it just seems I'm, I'm, I'm more wired to be a filmmaker than a tax accountant. I have a really good tax accountant who I love to death. And I'm, I don't want her job, and she doesn't want my job. Right? So it's good to know what you want to do in this world. Follow your dream, man. Follow your bliss. How did you feel about dyslexia? Well, um... How did I feel about it? How do I? Or how did I? I mean, when when I when I was a kid, you know, I you know for for some reason here here's the thing about about you know I don't know if you want to call me a successful dyslexic, but <laughs> successful dyslexics are just like anybody else who are successful. They have an advocate, they have somebody behind them that supports them, and uh, so I guess you know my my parents and um, you know have four older sisters. So I guess I grew up in a world of love, right? And I guess I just knew that I could do stuff. Even though I couldn't read so well, I couldn't write so well in school, um, I had a, a strong enough sense of myself that, that um, when the teachers were telling me that I wasn't trying hard enough, and I'm just lazy, I was like, hey man, I'm trying pretty hard here. I'm not lazy. They, you know, the teachers back in those days, or in, in a lot of places where they're not properly trained, don't realize the damage that they do. Um, somehow, you know, I managed through all of that stuff. You know, I acted out. I was, a, you know, a troublemaker at different times in, in, in the period. But, I mean, because I learned to read, because I, I, and I read a lot, that I was able to read up on the subject. And, and you know, part of the, the healing or the self-awareness. Um, and you find out what dyslexia is, and then you kind of come to terms with it. I mean, I always knew I was a little bit different, and my handwriting is atrocious. And besides that, a first grade teacher changed me from left handed to right handed. It was like, it was not a neuroscientist, but a first grade teacher who just thought it'd be kind of nice that if everybody was writing with their right hand. Meanwhile, really messed up my already, you know, my brain that needed a little bit more help and, and different kind of remediation. How did you feel, get treated in school by dyslexia? How did I get treated? Yeah. You mean, you mean, what do you mean? Well, like, how did their teachers treat you? Well, it's a really interesting thing. I think it would be really great if we could have an elevator, a time elevator, <laughs> and go back, right? If you could, what if you could say to your, to your teacher, did you go to another school before you went here? Did you go to, did you go to a different school before you? Okay. So sometimes maybe your teachers might not, 
you know, be kind of understanding a little bit. Wouldn't it be great if you could take a time elevator just before, the day before you went to kindergarten, the day before you went to first grade, because you were excited, man, right? You were excited, <laughs> right? So, so that's what I want to be able to tell teachers sometime. It's like, hey, you know, you know, we went to school pretty happy, man. You know, everything was looking pretty darn good. And then all of a sudden you begin to start failing at your first job, kindergarten, mm -hmm. first grade. You're failing. And what do you do when you're, when you're a kid and you're failing? So different things, you know, different things happen at different times in your life. But in the case of me, by the time I got to high school, I was what, what back in the 1970s was known as a juvenile delinquent. You know, of course I was a problem for the teachers in 12th grade, but they didn't realize what was going on. And, they, and nobody got in the time elevator to kind of figure out, how did we get to this place? So, I mean, actually our film talks about all of that too. Because I use, I use my story. Because I like working with me because I'm, I'm, I'm usually, I'm, I'm, I'm available when I need myself. And I'm usually easy for myself to work with. So. But no, I did tell my, I, I did use my story as, as an everyman story, uh, you know, and I also showed a lot of other dyslexic stories. You'll f uh, be amazed at how similar people's stories are. That's all the questions that we have, so thank you. Cool, are you going to come see our movie tomorrow? I hope so, I hope so. Cool.